and we begin welcoming our residents into the call. You ready? All right, at this time, there's no one in the waiting room. You're on, David. Excellent. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the FBL undergrounding and hardening presentation. My name is David Mendez. I'm the Village of Pinecrest uh, Public Works Director. Uh, I'd like to introduce Javier Prado from FPL. He's going to be leading the presentation that you're going to be seeing momentarily. When we finish the presentation, we're going to answer some frequently well, asked questions that have been asked uh, by email prior to the meeting. After that, we're going to uh, go into a Q&A session and we'll answer as many questions as possible before our time runs out. Um, after that, if you have any questions, we wanna make sure everybody gets, gets their question answered. Uh, you'll be able to forward your, your emails or your questions to the public works uh, email address, publicworks at pinecrest-fl.gov. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to Javier Prado of FPL. He's going to introduce his team and lead us through the slideshow. Thank you. Thank you, David and, and Nicole uh, for setting this up. Um, and good evening, everyone. My name is Javier Prado. I'm here with uh, Florida Power and Light. And I'm here to talk today about FPL Storm Secure Underground Program. I'd like to quickly introduce uh, the rest of the FPL team that we have online with us today. Eduardo Escudero is our engineering lead. Alex Lopez is our production lead, which is also a construction supervisor. Arturo Perez is our lead customer outreach specialist. Ray Lozano is our manager of customer relations and project controls. Enrique Formoso is our manager of this program. Baldwin English is our external affairs manager. Hector Maestri is our customer advisor for the village of Pinecrest and George Bennett is with Marketing and Communication. Next slide, please, Nicole. All right, um, this is gonna be an informational presentation on the Storm Secure Underground Program, which is a new program that started in 2018. The intent of this program is to underground segment of power lines to help enhance the reliability of your service and speed the restoration of power after a severe weather event, like a hurricane, but also in favorable blue sky days that you have good weather. Next, next slide, please. All right, currently FPL operates about 75,000 miles of power lines in the 35 countries we serve throughout the state. The power lines we'll be discussing today are the distribution system, that you mostly see, mostly see in your community. Currently, approximately overhead power lines that make up about 60% of our distribution system. Um, and the underground lines make up about 40% of our system. You see two images on your screen currently. The one on your right is just an example of a pole. It's an example of an overhead power line. And the image on your left is a pad mounted transformer and it's an example of an underground uh, facility for the distribution system. Next slide, Nicole. All right, within the distribution system, there's two types of power lines. On the right, in the image on the right, you have a picture of a feeder, which we, we refer to as feeder, but for this meeting, I refer to it as a main power line. These are typically seen on major streets and roadways, and on average, they provide power to about 1,500 customers. On the left, you see what we call a lateral, but I'll refer to it as the neighborhood power line. And most of them are seen on side streets or behind the house. And on average, they provide power to less customers than a feeder. The laterals are connected to the main power lines. Um, this also is different in our transmission system. All right, so within the, these lines, there's poles and there's made, they, they're made up of wood or concrete and feeder poles are typically a little bit taller than the lateral poles. Um, the Storm Secure Underground program is gonna solely focus on the neighborhood power lines or the laterals, which is the image on your left. 
Next slide, please. All right. Um, since 2006, FPL has undertaken a number of projects to make the grid stronger and more storm resilient to ensure safe and reliable service in good weather and in bad. Uh, for example, FPL has hardened or strengthened more than 860 main power lines that serve critical community facilities, including hospitals, police and, fi and police and fire stations, which are necessary to get the community back to normal after a storm. Um, we've also inspected over a million poles in our system, and all of the poles are currently undergoing the next eight year cycle in that process. Um, in that program, we remove poles that don't meet our standards and replace them with ones that are stronger. Um, that these hardening efforts started again, like I said, with the main power lines, and we plan on completing them over the next seven years by traditional hardening efforts, which is to replace existing power poles with stronger ones. So everything I've mentioned so far has been on the main feeder lines. But in 2018, we started this program, the Soap Secure in the Ground program, and has to begin hardening our neighborhood power lines. That is what today's presentation will be about. Next slide, Nicole. All right, the most the most uh, damaging aspect of Hurricane Irma was not so much the wind being blown directly on the system, but instead it's what it blew down with it, what it knocked over and carried into our equipment. As you can see from some of the pictures here, when a tree blows over, it's going to take out the power lines with it, especially if that tree is not in the right place or it's not planted properly. Um, we found also that trees outside of our right of way damaged our own equipment. As a result, you know, we, we took this challenge head on and um, after Hurricane Irma, we had a lot of crews, uh, vegetation crews um, working to remove all this debris that landed on our power lines. So they had to do a tremendous amount of work before we could even begin to restore our power lines. Again, traditional hardening efforts on main power lines are about upgrading the aerial facilities and typically installing stronger poles, but that will not be effective for our program, for our neighborhood power lines, especially if those power lines are in your backyards or in inaccessible locations. This is why FPL has chosen undergrounding for the neighborhood power lines. And Pinecrest, Pinecrest in particular has a lot of trees and vegetation um, this storm secure program, underground program would help alleviate all those tree trimming efforts. We, we don't want to be in your backyard having to trim those trees. It, it's going to be favorable to let them grow. Ne next slide, please. All right. So when we think of um, reliability, for the most part, we think of bad weather. But in day to day operations, underground power lines perform at least 50% better than overhead. A hurricane will cause extremely severe and unfavorable weather, but on a blue sky day, a tree branch could fall on a power line and cause an outage. Um, this program will help improve reliability, not just in hurricanes and storms, but during good weather days as well. And you know, you may have underground service, which means that only, only that last span of service is underground from your service point to your meter. But in this program, we want to put the entire power line underground. Meaning, um, currently, like, like my, I referred to my example, if a tree falls on your neighbor's house, you could also experience a power outage. But with this program, that will no longer be the case. Next slide, Nicole. The initiative is exploring the benefits of undergrounding specific neighborhood power lines. Um, we started this program in 2008. We continue to identify projects throughout our entire service area. This program is not just here in Miami or in Pinecrest. This program is statewide across all of FPL service territory. Um, we are committed to work with all communities, neighborhoods, and customers once the projects are identified. A large portion of every single project is the customer outreach phase, which I'll be talking more in an upcoming slide. 
but this is a joint effort between FPL and all the customers that are on the project. Next slide. All right, what is the criteria for selecting our projects? Um, projects are designated due to a variety of factors, including performance of the power lines in Hurricane Matthew and Irma, performance of the power line during day-to-day -day operations, and severe weather events over the past 10 years. Outages and power lines, including those caused by severe uh, uh, vegetation-related issues. Um, due to vegetation conditions, these power lines are more prone to experience outages during severe weather and major storm events. So the selection process is based on reliability criteria. The power lines are selected from worst reliability to the best, and reliability data is dynamic and can change. We do plan over the next 25 to 30 years to harden all of the 59,000 neighborhood power lines in FPL service territory, including um, more than 2 million customers and over 22,000 miles of power lines. Next slide, please. All right. The Storm Secure Underground program has four main phases for each project. The four phases are engineering, customer outreach, permitting, and construction. And they, our partner in this effort is Mastic, and they are also involved in every Storm Secure Underground program project. Each project starts with the design phase and engineers establish a conceptual drawing, which is provided to the customer outreach team. The customer outreach team is responsible for notifying customers that they have been selected to be part of the Storm Secure Underground program. Uh, that team, the outreach team, they will first mail out a letter with high level detail, just stating you've been selected and a quick description of what the program is about. That letter is then followed up by a folder that's sent out and it contains a lot more detail and informational pamphlets specific to the Storm Secure Underground program. Afterwards, the customer IRC team will begin to contact customers in all possible ways, including phone calls, text messages, email and in person door to door. This is the longest part of the customer outreach phase. During this phase, we will be asking customers to please sign off on easements required for the pad mounts and transformers or notifying them will be using existing platted utility easements if feasible. This is why the program is a joint effort between FPL and all of the customers that are on that project. A common question we get is if one can choose not to be part of the program. The answer is that even though the undergrounding process does provide a more reliable source of service, a customer is not required to, to participate in the program. However, there can be a risk in that the project being canceled due to lack of participation. And yes, sometimes one pending easement can cause the project to be canceled. The outreach phase will also include the outreach specialist visiting the outside of your home to look at your meter location and address any questions you may have. We're committed to informing all customers of what they can expect. The outreach team is expected to wear blue Storm Secure Underground program shirts. They should have FPL magnets to their vehicles. They should have all FPL contractor identification and safety vests that say, FPL approved contractor to ensure their credibility. Once the customer outreach phase is complete, uh, we finalize the design and submit for any required permits. Permits are typically for any proposed facilities and public right of way and will not all necessarily be from Pinecrest. Some roadways can be state or county owned in which we will need to obtain permits from them as well. Once permits are obtained, we proceed to the construction phase. The construction, I mean, excuse me, the customer outreach team will notify all the customers on, of the expected construction schedule at that time, but prior to the start of actual construction. During the construction phase, the customer outreach team will remain engaged and be your liaison for any sort of questions or concern you may have. 
they will also make they may also need to coordinate access to your property with our construction vendor mastic and there will also be an outage required but only at the point when construction crews are ready to convert your service this outage will coordinate it with you at least 48 hours in advance and the outage should take no longer than two to four hours once construction is completed we will restore to the original condition your property was in before construction. Next slide, please. All right, the, the images you see on the screen now provide you with an idea of what a residential home receiving power from an overhead power line could look like after the project is completed. On the left, you see, uh, you know, possible existing conditions. This is typical for an overhead neighborhood power line. You could see the power line with all the facilities mounted on it. And you see the overhead service drop, which is the, the span of cable from the cylindrical gray box to the weatherhead. On the right, you see an example of an image after we completed our project. We have at that point removed all the overhead facilities that belong to FPL. And if there are other attached utilities on it, we will cut off about the top third of the pole. Um, and the attached utilities will remain attached to them. Typically, they include AT&T and Comcast. You also, see, you also no longer see the overhead service drop. We have converted the customer via a junction box, which I'll talk more in an upcoming slide. And this image does show a pad mounted transformer. Next slide, please. All right, um, we, uh, to install our underground conduit, we use directional boring. It also has a horizontal directional drilling. It's got different names, but it's all the same type of construction method. A directional boring construction method allows for the installation of the conduit to be below trees and their root systems. In Florida, most of the root systems are within the top three feet of the soil below the surface. Um, and our typical requirements are that we install our power lines three to four feet below ground, but we can definitely be deeper if necessary to avoid tree roots or other obstacles. In addition, this method of construction is a lot less invasive than trenching in an open trench. Next slide, Nicole. This is an actual image of a directional drilling machine. Um, you know, it, it gets inserted into the ground. It drills through the ground until its end point. At the end point, we attach the conduit to it and we pull the drill back. As it's being pulled back, the conduit gets installed uh, where it's supposed to be. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the image here. Um, we, we will have to install a junction box, which is what um, you see in the image on the right. We also call it a meter enclosure adapter box. And this is being installed to provide underground service to your meters. Um, we are responsible in this program to, to install all facilities all the way up to your meter, um, including the entire, entire ladder, which I talked about earlier. The entire power line is going to be placed underground. In order to install this junction box or meter box adapter, there will also be a second form to sign off on and give us consent to attach it to your house. I'd like to emphasize here a bit that the meter itself belongs to FPL, but the meter enclosure belongs to the customer. Uh, the meter enclosure is what the meter is inserted onto. Next slide, please. Right here we have two images um, commonly installed in our program. The one on your left is a pad mounted transformer and it has the same functionality as the cylindrical transformers are cur currently attached to the poles. The image on your right is a handhold. Um, our crews install these when necessary. It might be due to uh, the, the distance of cable. We might need to install it to be able to pull the cable, or you may have existing underground service and it might 
uh, for construction purposes, it might make sense to install one of these and intercept your service with our new um, underground facilities. Next slide. Here are some more images of our directional drilling machines and um, large cable reel. Uh, and the slide, the slide shows how the condo is installed. It's a lot less disruptive than the trenching, which I talked about earlier. Um, our contractor will be uh, doing this type of work. Once it's completed, they will uh, restore it to a pre-construction state. These cable reels are, are very large. Um, we got to set them up typically in, in right-of-way locations or in accessible areas. Next slide, please. All right, so here we have some slides that are, um, are going to be specific to Pinecrest, right? Currently, we have 43 neighborhood power lines that have been selected. Approximately 20 miles are aerial power lines and we have approximately 1,240 customers. Out of those power lines, 10 of them are currently undergoing the customer outreach phase, and those 10 equate to approximately 5.3 miles of power lines and 280 customers. These 10 specific projects will only reach construction if we have success in completing the outreach process. Next slide. We have already completed, fully completed 16 power lines in Pinecrest. These 16 power lines are approximately four and a half miles of aerial power lines that we removed and approximately 345 customers. So these people are already um, enjoying the benefits of underground power. In addition, we have eight power lines that are in active construction right now in, in, in Pinecrest, which equate to three and a half miles of power lines, aerial power lines, and about 190 customers. Next year, we have planned um, six additional eight power lines, which is six miles of, of, of power lines, uh, aerial power lines, excuse me, and an additional 380 customers. Um, we have uh, no concern that we'll be able to reach construction. Pinecrest has been more than um, nice to us with regards to our permitting process, and we comply with anything that's required uh, from our cities that we work in. Next slide, please. Okay, this image is an image of Pinecrest and we outline and color the different projects we have and what phases they're in. So another common question we get is when will my house be undergrounded? So what you see on the screen represents for the most part our 2020 and 2021 plan. Outside of that, we have a formula or criteria that we review with the Public Service Commission that is based on hurricane performance, vegetation outage history, day-to-day -day performance and outage history, and overall reliability issues. The formula dictates what we work on so it's totally objective. In other words, we cannot pick and choose what we work on. The plan is to run it again in 2021 year end and go back to the Public Service Commission for approval in 2022. So if you don't see your, your, your house on this image, it does not mean that you will not be selected. We do have intentions of converting all of our laterals to underground. But as I said earlier, this is a 25 to 30 year program. It's a statewide effort. So you may not be selected right away, but yes, we do have intentions. Of, of converting all of the neighborhood power lines to underground. Next slide. So in the next couple of images are gonna take you through some examples of completed projects. In this first image, I'd like to point out what I described earlier in the rendering of a, a project before and after. You can see here the pole uh, towards the right, we have completely removed everything that belongs to FPL. We have cut the pole and, we, and what remains is the communication cables. That is not FPL. There is a pad mounted transformer there uh, in the image as well. Next slide. 
This is another example of a house that was converted. Um, there's also a pad mounted transformer. I'd like to point out that not every single house needs a transformer. Uh, in Pinecrest, we're averaging one transformer every three to four houses. And we have had projects that we average one transformer every two homes. So it all matters on our engineering, um, our voltage drop and flicker calculations, the size of your lot, and, and the demand from the electrical demand from your house. Next slide, please. All right, here's another image of a house that was completed. Um, it's a lot cleaner look. You don't have the power lines in the back or on the side. And you, and you see the, the transformer there as well. All right, next slide. All right, so I will answer some questions at this time. I did receive some uh, from Pinecrest in advance. I'm gonna go ahead and ask and answer them myself. These are the most commonly asked questions. Um, after that, we will have some time to allow you all to ask your questions. And afterwards, when we run out of time, you can email your questions to Pinecrest at the email addresses shown on your screen. Pinecrest will compile them all together and send them to us to address. All right, so I, I tried to address some of the most common questions during the presentation, but I'll do my best at answering some of the other ones, right? Um, I answered the question of when will my house be underground? That, that's a question we always get. We, our intentions, again, are to convert them all. Um, just because you did not see your house selected in that image of Pinecrest does not mean you will not be selected. Um, you know, we, we have to go with what is selected and approved by the Public Service Commission. Uh, the plan is to run it again a year in 2021 and ask for approval again as to what we do in 2022 and moving forward. Another common question we get is what costs are associated to this program? Um, th those customers participating in the pilot are not paying anything additional than what's on your bill. We are covering all the costs. Now, if a customer has um, issues with their meter, uh, sorry, with their meter enclosure, that is customer property. So it will be required for the customer to, to be responsible for all costs associated to repairing, upgrading, or whatever is necessary to that meter enclosure. However, this is not usually the case, um, but it does happen occasionally. All right, another question we have, um, any increased health concerns related to underground wiring? Um, no. Scientific studies have not demonstrated any sort of concern with EMF or anything that contributes to a disease. Um, these cables, our underground cables are fully insulated. They're installed inside of a conduit and the conduit is buried underneath the ground. So the answer is no. Um, uh, another question is, can flooding affect the functionality of electricity flow to the house? We are not concerned with this. Um, for the most part, it needs to be severe flooding for there to be an issue, right? And if you have severe flooding, you're going to have more issues than just your power being out. If there's severe flooding, we just need to wait for the water to reside so that our crews can visit your neighborhood and start working on any sort of restoration required. But all of our underground equipment is water resistant. Um, again, it has to fully like engulf the transformer for a sustained period of time for there to be issues. All right, Nicole, um, I'm ready to open it up for questions. I know there's a raise hand feature that we were gonna use to allow customers and residents to ask their questions. Um, I'll be addressing the questions along with the rest of the FPL team. So please have patience with us as we work through this um, new world of Zoom. Um, Gerald Greenberg. Well, first, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for this presentation. 
I just had a quick question. The some of the projects are listed as final design. What is that? Does that mean that they've already received the uh, necessary uh, support from the neighbors? And, and if so, when, when do you expect those to be done? I don't know if that was synonymous with under construction for next year or what that one means. Correct. So final design means that the project has completed the customer outreach phase. We are finalizing up the design based on what you know the outreach process resulted in. So we may we may be in the process of getting permits, but those projects are slated for 2021 construction. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. I could pretend it was just a general question and not about you know where I fit on the map, but uh, I it's guess okay. you'd see through that. So I'm thank sure you for other, your time. I'm sure others had the, the same question, so thanks for asking. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. My name is Roland Dupuy, and I am at uh, the Reserve of Pinecrest. Do you have a schedule of when you're going to be doing our area? Um, if you are not within an area shown in the image of Pinecrest uh, with the different colors, um, we may not have a schedule, right? It's all based on and the criterion formula that we have to review with our public service commission that regulates all electricity service providers in the state of Florida. Um, it's based on hurricane performance, vegetation history, outage history, day-to-day -day performance, um, and overall reliability issues. So we, we, we don't choose what we work on. We, our plan is to run this at the end again, a, a year end 2021, and present it to the public service commission and they will either approve or reject it or make or suggest modifications. We do not, I don't have access to the uh, colored map that you're talking about because I don't see it on my screen. If I give you my location, would you be able to tell me where do we stand? We are on US 1 and 102 Street. Yes, yeah, so you could send in your address to those email addresses shown on your screen right now, send it to Pinecrest. Okay. It will, it will compile all of the questions and send it uh, over to us at FPL. Um, we can review your address, yes. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, Javier, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Eric uh, Bustillo. I, I was contacted by FPNL a few, uh, a number of months ago indicating that, you know, they were uh, doing this project, so on and so forth. They said they were going to come by and visit and sort of checked the uh, power lines behind me. Anyway, I never heard again. And then all of a sudden I, I see that they're literally working currently in my neighborhood. Um, and it appears based on that map that I'm literally surrounded by it, but I'm not one of the houses where they're gonna be doing, that's gonna benefit from the undergrounding project. And so I had a question as to why that is. Um, see, you have a very specific question. We are willing to help you out. Um, but I would need to know your address. Um, I don't think in this public forum is the best place for you to share that information. I mean, I'm happy to give it to you. It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm, or, or if you give me somehow who to, who to contact directly, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, yeah. Can you please um, just send it to Pinecrest and, and we'll, we'll look into it. Okay. Javier? One, one follow-up. I mean, have, as part of the criteria, I mean, have you guys thought about... Many of us in the Pinecrest area do not have county water. Uh, so we're on wells, which means that when we lose power, not only do we lose power, but we lose the ability to have water, which makes it you know, all that much more impacting on those of us that are not on county water. I mean, have you guys thought about it, adding that as a factor in assessing you know, who to prioritize in terms of undergrounding the lines? Because I mean, when you lose power and you lose water, it is very, very difficult, if not next to impossible, to be able to remain in your house. I mean, if you lose power and you still have water, you can live with without power in the bed, but you can't live without power and water at the same time. So, Mr. Bustillo, what is the question, though, pertaining so to water? With whether you would add as a factor in considering what areas to prioritize for this undergrounding project taken into account whether the area has uh, county water or, or not. Because again, 
losing power for, for those of us that are on well water means that we lose power and we lose water. Our, our selection process for the power lines is solely based on reliability. So the reliability data can change from year to year. Um, and that's what we base it on. No, no, I understand that. I understand that's what you base it on. And perhaps Pine Quiz is a little unique because mm -hmm. most other parks, certainly of Dade County, have uh, county water. We don't. We are, you know, there are parts of Pine Quiz that are still on well water, uh, where, as I said, not having power is in essence sort of a bit of a double whammy. Not only do you not have power, but you don't have water either. I'm, I'm, I'm asking and suggesting that FPNL may also take that as a factor into consideration in deciding which areas to address first as part of this undergrounding project. I understand your concern with, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I was just, how are you doing, Mr. Bustillo? So this is Ray Lozano. So uh, I think that's a valid concern and it's something that we should, we can definitely look into. I'm not, you know, not gonna make any promises. I don't know how much it would impact the weighting, right, of the reliability analysis that we perform, um, but it's something we can definitely take into consideration, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I would certainly urge you to do that because again, as, as I said, you can live without power for a bit, but you can't live without power and water at the same time. Agreed, agreed. And, and, that's, and that's part of this, this pilot process that we're doing, right? So it's all about learning as we go, right? Learning um, different things that impact customers, um, efficiencies we can build into the process. So that's definitely something that we can take into account. So thank you yeah. for mentioning that. And, and by the way, you, you could have that discussion with Plankers as well. They're well aware that I think it's about a third of the neighborhood is still on well water um, and not doesn't have county water. Hey, Mr. Basio, can you please uh, email your question and your comments to the Public Works email address? I think we need to ask uh, uh, more residents to ask some questions at this time. Understood. Thank you. Thanks. But, thank you. But thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Council Member Holcomer. Hi, everybody. Um, my question is for FPL and um, David Mendez. How do you foresee communication and cooperation happening between our public's work department and FPL as you work through these projects? What sort of system do you have set up right now in terms of information sharing? And do you see it sh changing in any way as these projects go forward? That's a very good question, uh, Council Member Hawkmer. Um, Yes, it's improved dramatically over the past seven or eight months. Um, this meeting is kind of proof of that. We're communicating with FPO uh, much more than we had previously. We get notification uh, of their pro upcoming projects when they submit for permitting. Um, we review those plans. We maintain a database in our office of where those permits, uh, the areas that they impact and we maintain a database of those neighborhoods that have approved permits. Um, and then we follow up with FPL. Part of the permit requirements are for them to call us and notify us when they're ready to uh, begin construction. And then we inspect the projects afterwards to make sure that they've restored the areas, um, as Javier was mentioning, uh, in the public right away. Um, and that's basically the permitting process that we, that we follow right now. So to follow up, if a resident has an issue with, for example, the right of way not being repaired to its previous condition, should they be contacting you at Public Works to act as intermediary and advocate, or should they be count contacting FPL directly? They absolutely should be contacting us. We're the, we're the um, agency that is responsible for enforcing the permit. So absolutely, they should contact us. And, and by the way, we don't close a permit uh, with FPL until until every issue has been addressed. And, and I think it's also important to understand that a given project is going to have a customer outreach person assigned to it, whether it be the turnkey and or FPL, ultimately it's FPL oversight. Um, so that person will also be in, uh, a contact for the, for the, for the homeowner, so. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, um, thank you for everything. Uh, one question I have is, uh, do you know when 
do you expect the whole neighborhood to have um, to have uh, you know the cables cables buried? Because uh, you know some of us are not on the map, of course. And I would like to know if you have an estimated completion of the whole neighborhood. We we have an estimated completion date for our entire program, which is twenty five to thirty years. Um, I can tell you that right now. We, we have all the projects I showed on the screen, and those are the ones that we are currently working on. Um, there will be more that we would like to do, but it's all dependent on what our Public Service Commission um, reviews and decides to approve. So we okay. don't and have and a How can we line. get informed on, on what are the next steps on this? Um, you will be informed through the customer outreach process the if your pro, if your neighborhood power line is selected, you will receive a letter, and then that you receive a folder, and then you'll start getting more contact from the customer outreach specialist. You know, at that point, you'll know that you have your power line has been selected for this program. Thank oh, you. Isn't that funny? That is fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Strange, strange. Yeah. Well, good, good. Actually, it it um. Uh, it, it looks as though it's, it's a good thing as far as, um, uh, hang on a minute, I'm watching a, Miss Waters, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Twain. uh, pardon me, I, I unintentionally, um, uh, unmuted myself, so I apologize, move on to the next one, please. I have, um, I have a question on the, um, this is Barbara Tria. I noticed it, you had suggested that this is at this stage a pilot program and therefore there's no cost to the resident. What is the plan moving forward as to the length of time it will be considered a pilot program and therefore having no cost to residents? And the original pilot was slated, slated to go through 2020, but it was recently extended to 2022 by a public service commission to allow FPL more time to test uh, design construction practices and assumptions, uh, better understand customer impacts and, and the customer sentiment, uh, identify barriers and constraints, and also uh, identify and implement lessons learned and efficiencies. Um, we have to bring back all these findings to the PSC or the public service commission in 2022 with the goal of proceeding with the rest of the program in the most cost efficient manner. Okay, I know, I know it's probably impractical and potentially impossible to answer, but were there any metrics done on potential costs that residents at some future date might be asked to um, bear? Hi, Barbara, this is uh, Ray Lozano. So yeah, I would say that you know, per, to your point, it is very early to speculate, right, any of that, but. Uh, when we, when pilot, when the program goes post pilot and it gets fully approved by the Public Service Commission, I think at that point we'll have a better idea, right, on customer bill impact. Um, so it's important to also understand that the Public Service Commission has to approve the program itself, right, and the program has to demonstrate uh, financial prudency uh, and that it makes sense for the customers, uh, Florida Power like customers. So. Um, don't have an exact, I mean, it is, it's still a pilot and it's, it's very early to speculate that. So, you know, we do our best to, to drive cost efficiencies into our programs, into our construction programs. Um, as you may or may now know, our bill is 30% lower than the national average as it is. So it's something you, that we do take pride in, um, but uh, that's, that's uh, what I can tell you now, at least. Oh, great, thank you. Daniel Annex. You're welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, I reviewed your P uh, PSC dockets of April 10th, where you actually submitted uh, your uh, progress around the report and extended and requested the extension for the next two years, where you're going to get uh, $653 million for this program. So I understand how it works. Uh, but I really would like to understand that can you share us the line data and performance data for those three categories in Pinecrest on every line uh, what you have just mentioned? Because for us, I have reviewed all the documents, what you actually sub, what FPL uh, submitted around, F, uh, around all of your pilot programs, but have, you have never actually uh, 
submit the, those details information uh, to the public. So I would like to understand that you you actually may multiply times the claim that you're making the selection based on the IRMA performance, based on uh, vegetational uh, outages, and which and based on day-to-day -day operation. And we don't have uh, visibility around those line information and how as they how are they impacted. The reason I'm asking it because I see some of your selection and I am actually concerned because I know some of this area actually has much worse IRMA impact, which has been selected for actually doing undergrounding uh, than the others. So my question is how you can actually share us each Pinecrest line data and performance information at least quarterly basis. Oh, I, I missed your name, I apologize. Daniel. Daniel, thank you for the question. So, yeah, I mean, for, you, you could submit that question to the, to the uh, email address on the screen and we will work with our uh, regulatory group who works closely with the Public Service Commission and determine what information we are allowed to or not allowed to share, right? Because some of it is customer information, some of it is confidential. So I, I appreciate okay. the question and I, we can we can work with our regulatory group within, within FPL and see what we can and can't share, but we are pretty, um, just at a high level, we, are, we work closely with the Public Service Commission and we're pretty transparent with everything that we provide them. Yes, I, I, you know, I actually even see your details, Pinecrest level details, solar installation by meter level. So it's like, I, I understand that you are really providing all those details, mm -hmm. but I have not seen those information regarding the line quality and line performance uh, okay. has, been, uh, has been published. And I see, I read all of your dockets, what you published and submitted, but none of them is includes any of those information. Okay, no, I appreciate the question and um... Go ahead and submit it and we'll check internally and see what we can and cannot provide. We'll follow up for sure. Thank you. Shannon You're welcome. Shannon Del Prado. Hi, thank you very much for this presentation. I have two quick questions. The first one is, will this video or this presentation be saved on the Village website for anybody who may have missed it today? That was number one. And then number two, and forgive me if you covered this, I dropped for a second and then got back on. In the event that your home is selected, one of the gentlemen mentioned, and there are many homes in Pinecrest who, who rely on power for water if they're on a well, is there a transition period within which the, the family or the home won't have power while you're transitioning from the over, you know, overhead to the underground? Okay, that first question is for Pinecrest, um, but I can answer the second one. Yes, so if you are selected, um, you'll know in advance. And when it comes time to convert your property, mm -hmm. that customer outreach team or construction has to coordinate with you an outage to convert your service. Typically that our outage is you know, on average two to four hours, but often less. Oh, wow, that's impressive. Okay, thank you. Ms. Del Prado, the, uh, the, this meeting is being streamed live on our YouTube channel and the archive video will be available on the YouTube channel as well. Thank you. Bob Manlan. Yes, hi, Javier. Yes. I was wondering if there's a place where we can go online to look at a more detailed map. Uh, the map that was shown, I had difficulty pinpointing where my house would lie in it. We Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Um, we can, uh, I believe Pine, Pine Chris is gonna share that presentation. Um, if it still does not, um, you know, if you still cannot see where your house is located, just reach out to us via the email on your screen, um, send us your location and, and we could definitely look into it. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. You're welcome. Victoria Trupo. Victoria Trupo. Oh, now I see. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good afternoon. I, I, this is great. I'm very happy this is happening. 
thank you very much for been doing this. So basically to understand something, all the under the cables go in the right of way. And basically from, from the right of way, you connect everybody and you, you enter every house underground. Correct. The only thing that we will install on private property is our, is our transformers in which we would need to get an easement or consent from the customer. Okay, so the, the other question would be, if there is a, like a group of neighbors that want to be faster, expedite this process, can we with the village like help getting the, the easement and the, the, the permit approved, like the signatures from the people, the outreach, can we help with the outreach to get our house sooner on the list? Uh, we, we will never ask that of you. That, that will be something that the customers have to take upon themselves. Uh, we're, we're fully responsible to, you know, do outreach on every single customer that is selected. And it's going to be our responsibility to reach out to, to, reach out to each and every single one of them. Um, if, a, if a customer on their own chooses to talk to their neighbors, you know, we appreciate it. But no, we, we would never ask that of you. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, this, hello, this is Eduardo with FPL. Um, just uh, wanted to add to Ms. Truco, uh, there may be an instance where you have a pull and that would that could be if you cannot take a conversion. So if, you're, if your meter is not ready for a conversion, we won't be able to add that box, that junction box that Javier um, described earlier. Um, however, you will have an opportunity uh, to reach out to an electrician to have that uh, box be brought up to standard, and then therefore we will be able to convert. <clears throat> so a possible scenario could be that you may have uh, a pole that would still be served from underground. So it will still be a more reliable service than you have uh, today. Thank you. And, you like a question? And, and, and one more thing to, to follow up. Uh, we, we do not share uh, customer information when we, when we go out in the field. So uh, unfortunately we cannot do that as far as sharing customers that do not want to be a part of the program. Um, so it, that would be, uh, you know, on, like Javier said, on your own accord, if you wanted to uh, start advocating on the, your name. But thank you for your question. Olga Arguello. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation today and the time you um, took to, um, to walk us through this. Um, I had, a, I wanted to know what, what are your forms of outreach? What is your outreach method? Is it um, just, is it door to door, phone calls, emails, um, mailers? And then also in the case that there are neighbors that are not, uh, do not want to sign up for the program, um, does that mean that um, we get put pushed back on the list or you don't implement the, the pilot? What's the process? All right, so you asked two questions. The first one, the answer is all of the above. Um, we do start by mailers, we send out a letter and then we follow that with a folder that contains a lot more detailed information and pamphlets. Following that folder, we will have our customer outreach specialist that is assigned to that project contact every single customer. They will be contacting you, um, you know, via phone, text message, email, or door to door, you know, whatever it takes to, to get a hold of the property owner. What, what was your second? Thank you. Um, sure. Thank you. Um, the second question was, um, what if there is somebody who is opts out of the program, the process or the program? Um, how does that impact the project and the rest of the neighbors we, on being, we, you know, that are interested in and in moving forward? Understood. Yes, we, we do our best to try to work around opposing customers. But unfortunately, sometimes we can't. And if that's the case, we would have to cancel that specific project. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Council Member Holcomer. I wanted to ask a, a finer, make a finer point on one of the previous questions, which was asking specifically if neighbors go out and organize as a group or as a neighborhood and get everybody on board. Does the FPL system allow for that project to then be accelerated in the approved project list 
or is it simply that you have a neighborhood that's primed and already had the legwork done when FBL determines that they're ready to start working in that neighborhood? So we have our plan for this year and next year, right? When we select the power line, um, we typically select it first for one year of design and outreach and the following year would be construction. So if uh, if an entire um, neighborhood or all the customers in our project are in favor, it'll just expedite the outreach process and it will ensure that it will reach construction the following year. But it wouldn't necessarily move the project up in the list of priorities, correct? Correct, not necessarily. It all matters um, what we have presented to the Public Service Commission and what they have proved for us to do. Thank you, understood. You're welcome. I'm going to take one final question and please encur and encourage you to please email any questions or comments you may have. Um, our last question will be for Gonzalo Navarro. Yes, hi, uh, sorry, I, I uh, before this, I didn't know that you have to raise your hand, so I interrupted before. So please excuse me if I did that. Uh, my question is this one, is this, um, you know, this program, is it determined by FBO? Or, I mean, is there any way that the city of Pinecrest with us, the people that live there, can uh, help, you know, FBL push uh, the program in our neighborhood? Or is it something that, you know, comes from, I don't know, statewide from FBL and there's nothing we can do to get our cables buried? For example, in my house, they, they were burying with that machine that you showed in the presentation yesterday in front of my house. But I'm not in the, in the ones that get the, the buried cable. So I, I thought I might get it. Now I'm realizing I don't. So is there any way we can, you know, I don't know, do a petition, work with the city and FBL at the same time to get that done? Or, or is something that is decided somewhere else? So in this specific program, the Storm Secure Underground program, we are all uh, selecting the power lines based on reliability. And again, it's what the Public Service Commission reviews and approves for us to do. Now, we do have a separate program at FPL it is not related to us or to what I do. Um, it's an overhead to underground conversion program um, that is customer driven or city driven. They would have to reach out to FPL and request it, but that would incur cost. Okay, but, but this commission you're talking about is the city of Pinecrest or is FPL? The city in, the, in this particular meeting, we, we're addressing village of Pinecrest. So the village of Pinecrest would have to approach FPL and the correct people in that program to, you know, say, hey, we want to put everything on their ground. Javier, um, I think you're misunderstanding his question. He's asking you where the PSC is located. I don't think he understands that the PSC oh. is a commission, which is in Tallahassee, and it is a state uh, entity. It is not a, a city of Pinecrest entity. Okay, so perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's Thank one you one. for clarifying that. Yeah. All right, just as a reminder, if you have any questions or you think of anything else, you know, later time, um, please send them off to Pinecrest and they will compile them on forward them to us. Um, I thank you all for attending and we really look forward to working with, with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, take care. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody, for, for attending. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Be well.